Let's take a look at Hawaii's quest for the Koa Trophy. And we start in Division Two, where the Final Four is set. Kapa'a and Kaimuki on one side as OIE runner-up Roosevelt successfully returned from the Big Island with a win over Kamehameha Hawaii, earning a trip to Maui to face the three-time defending champs of Lahaina Luna. Over in Division One, the reigning runner-up, undefeated Hilo of the Big Island, will lay out the welcome mat to Lelehua, with Moana Lua and Iwalani serving as an intriguing semifinal as well. And in the open division, the three-time reigning champs of St. Louis will look to make it 37 straight wins against Mililani. While on the other side of the bracket, it's Campbell and Kohuku. Now I want to welcome to the show Spectrum Sports Analyst, former Kaiser State Champion player and coach Rich Miano. And coach, as mentioned, the Crusaders aiming at adding another chapter to the dynasty. But if the history books teach us anything, never underestimate the strategy of a Trojan. And head coach Rod York built a schedule to prepare his team for this very game, didn't he? Yes, Rob. Mililani has had the toughest schedule in the state with Liberty of Nevada, Bosco from California. And it, Rod York's motto of anyone, anywhere should serve the Trojans well. But this is a big game against one of the nation's best teams, St. Louis. In big games, your big players need to ball out. I'm talking quarterback Brendan Agbayani, also running back Malosi Sam, wide receiver Kanoa Wilson, and defensively Shane Cady, Muelu Iosefa, Bama Mina, Wyndon Ho'uhuli, and Sonny Semi Atu, along with DB's Asher Pelanka. Absolute studs on that Trojan team. Crusaders and Mililani, a rematch of last season's state title game, the nightcap of an open division doubleheader at Aloha Stadium. But it's the early game that gains the traction of this week's build forward tough matchup. Oh, and that rumble you hear is a lifted raptor with bridge stones bearing down on a prime parking spot. That serves as the image that matches the intensity of Kahuku and Campbell Part 3. Now, despite entering the season as the anticipated heir to the league's throne, the Sabres have struggled against the Red Raiders. In two games this season, Kahuku went 2-0 and by a combined score of 81-7, to with running back Zeeland Matongi posting a preposterous 403 yards rushing with five touchdowns on just 34 carries. But it must be noted that Sabres stars were on the sideline as Pokii Adkins Kubuka'a, Titus Mokiao Atimalala, and Therese Tafai, to just name a few, have all missed Kahuku games in 2019. In the state tournament, black and orange are full green on the health meter. Both programs will bring their best in the ultimate test, who earns their spot in the next week's state championship game. Being that the bye week, we have four, uh, four weeks bye, it really helped us this year. And it looks like we're coming together as a team and our coaches are really coaching hard and working hard. We, we, we use the word third time's a charm and we hope it's our charm and we're going to play hard and we're going to show up and be both O and O and this one, it counts. It, it's you no know, way to move on and, and lose the hands in your equipment. We don't want a hand in our equipment right now. We, we're telling the boys, you know, the third time we've seen Cowboys, now we're going to see their full team. First time we didn't see Pokii, Tyrese was hurt. The second time we, we played him, Bubba wasn't playing. Titus was on the sidelines. So now this is this third time is the real Campbell Sabres. That was preseason number two. So that's what we're trying to tell the players that this is a different Campbell team that we've seen the first two times. Now, over the last 20 years, Kahuku graduate Darren Johnson has been the head coach at Kailua, Kaimuki, and Campbell. At those three schools, he's going to combine 1 and 13 against his alma mater, with his only victory coming last season in Eva Beach. All right, coach, we brought up the Sabres being bit by the injury bug this season. One player that has stayed relatively healthy, though, is UH bound receiver Tamatoa Mokiao Atimalala. Now, the junior tight is deservingly showered with attention, but number five is a serious threat as well. Yeah, Tamatoa, when you talk about a route runner, it's amazing how at the top of his routes, you look at a guy that's six feet tall, you look at a guy that is strong, can go over the middle and then extend plays. I mean, this is one of the state's best receivers, and I I think one of the best all-around players in Hawaii. And you talk about Titus being injured, Pokii Adkins, Kupuka'a was hurt. This is a guy in number five that had to play both ways at one point in this season. How big is that for this team? It's huge. I mean, in, ter in terms of leadership, being the senior and having a brother who's a phenomenal football player, and you mentioned Pokii, this guy is the kind of guy that you want to give the speech in the pregame. The guy that you know each and every week is going to go out there and play offense, defense, and get it done. I mean, he's one of the best players we've seen in a long time. 
time coming from the west side. And as for the pride of the North Shore, vintage running game and defense. And if there's a lab at Kuhuku to create the perfect Red Raider, the mold may be fit for Zion IU. Yeah, Zion IU, now I've watched this kid for two years now. In the Polynesian football showcase and combine in Las Vegas, no one blocked him. GPA football, men in the trenches, no one blocked him. All season, no one has consistently blocked this young man. And when you're junior IU's grandson and you're Leonard Peters' nephew, you talk about DNA and genetics, they're paramount. And also a rugby All-American. All right, it is continued dominance for the Red Raiders or third time's a charm for the Sabres. Either way, the winner is state title game bound and the loser is turning in their gear. Kickoff set for 4 o'clock in Halava. If you're concerned about Pauhana traffic, we'll save you a seat on the hype train. Choo! Choo! Hey, what's up, everybody? Former Rainbow Warrior and NFL receiver Greg's house here. And every week, Diamond Bakery and I are looking for the best touchdown catches in Hawaii prep football. So whether you see it on TV or film it yourself, let us know by using the hashtag grab and go or tag Rob DeMille on Instagram, and your TD connection can be featured right here on Cover 2. Here's this week's Diamond Bakery grab and go. Courtesy Spectrum OC16. Congratulations to Baldwin senior receiver Kapena Kamai. As a multi sport athlete that also stars for the Bears baseball team, scored the final points of the Maroon and Blues season. His 63 yard touchdown, time stamped with a stiff arm, is this week's grab and go. Touchdown, Bears! Anihara and it's Throwback Thursday time. Tonight we take the Cover 2 time machine back to 1988, where Lelehua's Adrian Morel rewrote the record books in Wahiwa. In this three season, as the horsepower to the Mules' rushing attack, number 25 recorded 20 games of 100 yards or more, including two that went for 300 plus. His 332 yards game against Waianae in 1988 set a state record and still ranks as the seventh best rushing game in the island football history. I knew I can do it. It's just, just me going out there and having a chance to do it. What in the world happens to create a 300 yard game for a kid. Shoot, so I'd wish we, we know and then maybe we can duplicate the process. After high school, Morell starred at West Virginia before a prolific 11-year career in the National Football League, scoring 23 touchdowns, most notable with the Jets and Cardinals. Today, Morell is in the business development focusing on real estate and economic growth in the Carolinas. He and his wife of 25 years have three children, and as you would expect, Adrian still has the need for speed on the racetrack. With his 68 Camaro that competes in the Southeast Grudge Racing Circuit. Tonight, we send some aloha to the legendary Adrian Morell of the Lelehua Mighty Mules. For Cover 2, powered by the LA Rams, I'm Wanihara. Thanks for watching.